So good afternoon uh, ladies and gentlemen. This is part two of a video that I made uh, the first part of this morning. Uh, it is on the uh, installation of a Wedgetail Ignitions Australia uh, ignition system to a points ignition bike uh, series runs from the Slash 5 in 1970 uh, through to the um, about the end of 1970 eight or nine 78 I think and then they went to the points in a can so points in a can is a different application to this uh, this is a straight points ignition uh, as you find in the slash sixes 90s 100s and those bikes this particular bike is a 76 model r75 7 so it was the points ignition bike and as I went through quite some detail a little earlier on how that fits in I thought I'd show you what it looks like when it's ready to be started. So there's the Dyna coil uh, fitted up now. And I actually wound up taking off those brackets that the other guy fitted and putting the correct brackets that come in the kit in. And the reason is that if you look down on that, you can see it enables you to turn the module slightly and get it clear of the coil. The coil uh, in this application is a little bit deeper than the original ones. But if you have twin coils, there's a coil on each side. One goes on here and there's a corresponding bracket on the other side and they're a short and Bosch coil. And by doing, using these brackets, um, if, the, if this little harness is going to interfere with the coils, you can simply get a hold of them and bend them up at the back through that joint so that the back is higher and, and the uh, plug points down at an angle that will get it down underneath the coils and into that uh, hatch that goes down into the starter housing quite easily. You can also, by tilting these in and out a little bit and moving them backwards and forwards in the slots, you can turn the module as I've done there and bring that around to make it a much nicer and uh, less traumatic fit. It also, and I don't know if I'm going to be able to do this with the camera on, but I'll give it a try. Yep. It lets you unplug it without having to fiddle around with screwdrivers and prizing things and stuff like that because there's enough room in there to be able to get your finger in underneath press up the little wire clip that locks it and just release it off the off the module that is why we use and designed those particular clips for this system they were a similar clip to what was on the emerald isle version but we changed it a little bit uh, just to make it easier to make the thing neat and tidy really I've tidied up all the wiring I'm going to pause this so I've just gone around the other side of the bike now and this is the other side of the same installation you can see there there's the module brackets with the module hanging down uh, on the side of the coil you'll see as I explained earlier in the video that this is the way I've set it up so that the coil is actually swept back in under the frame uh, protects it to some extent from moisture but of course it's a motorbike so it's not going to save it you can see that the earth wire is clearly and strongly mounted I put that earth wire around onto that brand new bracket I've run taps down all the threads in the in the holes and the plates on the frame so it's a very nice clean connection with a really good earth and that is essential if you're going to run these systems they must have good electrical contact tax see the black wire hooked up on this side and if we go around the bike, I'll pause it, to this side, you can actually see up in there, just there, the green and blue wire is on one bracket and the green wire going back to the module is on the top bracket, the earth wire on the other side and the black wire on the other side, so that's your trigger. So that's your coil installation from this side. Now you will notice that I've now plugged another module into here um, that is designed uh, so that I can show you how to time it. Um, of course the module will work because it's the cabling that's earthed, not the actual module itself. It draws its power and its earth and its triggering all from that little cable that plugs onto it there. And then we move down here maybe we can see in here without the torch but i doubt it uh, if you were to look in there you'll see i just bumped that slightly so i'll just move it back again so i can see it just hang on i'm just going to pause this for a second so the s mark is now right on the notch in the um, in the engine you can see it through there 
So it's timed up and ready to go. And that also means that as you come around here, you'll find that I've loosened off the points plate. Sorry for the knocking around, but it's just the way it is. Um, and you now can see that the adjusting slots line up with the lock, lock bolts that are in the plate, the blue plate that moves around. Now I have loosened those off. The engine is timed at top dead centre. Uh, sorry, at the S mark. And if you look on here, hopefully the sunlight isn't going to get in our way. You can see if I now push it all the way down or clockwise, bring it slowly, slowly backwards, the trigger light will light up in a second. If I, there you go, it just lit up then. So, hang on, no, it didn't. I didn't turn the ignition on. So the, the light on the phone did that. Now just watch, there you go. Trigger and controller together. Controller, trigger. See how the trigger light just came on there? There, there. Just there and your bike is timed. If you were able, if I were able to show you, if I had somebody there to do that for me, each time that light fires up, these spark plugs spark. So that's how you time it. It's a very simple process. You can and should check it if you have a uh, timing light. When the thing's running, rev it up to the Z mark. They aren't always exactly right on the Z mark. It depends on the bike and the flywheel and the markings, but you can move the timing slightly to make it run exactly on the Z mark when the bike is running. Um, if it's out one degree or something like that, I wouldn't be too concerned about that myself personally. Um, so long as the bike is running well, uh, that is not going to make any difference to it. But to be honest, I generally tend to time my own bikes uh, on the Z mark or the F mark, depending on which model bike it is. So there you go. That's the operation and installation of a points ignition system uh, wedge tail Australia ignition system. It's a quite a simple and straightforward process. Uh, as I said, I've gone around and tidied up most of the wiring. I've got a little bit to do under the front cover there. I tend to leave the rubber tube and everything off the timing mechanism while I'm doing it because it puts a spring in there that can sometimes pull it around while you're trying to tighten everything up. Uh, do remember to take the Allen key out of the uh, center bolt on your alternator and do remember to tighten up the points plate when you're finished. If you have two coils, it's the same operation. I explained that in the other video and I hope this helps clear up some of the mystery of how these things actually work. Ride safely, stay well, until we meet again.